What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video we're going to be starting roles and we're going to be having a very beginner friendly introduction to roles. Roles can be kind of confusing so we will just go ahead and start talking about what exactly are roles. So roles in an app the more formal definition is going to be a role is what is going to give you more control over where people can go in your app. But if I kind of had to give like my own just kind of like dumb definition, it's going to be, and this isn't always the case, a role is more than likely just going to be like an admin or a blogger. Like if you have a blogger for your site, you will give bloggers certain rights to update and create blogs. If you have an admin, the admin's going to be able to do everything. If you have uh, maybe like a moderator, you will have that person will have even slightly less rights than the admin and all of those kind of come together to add or to make this idea of a role and you can see your roles in the table and I've actually um, made a couple roles you won't actually have roles but this is just kind of to illustrate an example is you have a actual roles table and then you have a user roles table if you look at my voice just like cracked but if you look at asp.net user roles what you notice is that there's a user there's a join table this is actually a join table this isn't a typical table the relationship between a user and a role is actually a many-to-many -many re relationship with the uh i'm just going to call it .net roles so you have .net users which you're definitely probably familiar with we just had to create a bunch of new users but you also have roles and you we're going to we will talk about claims next and you also have role claims and claims are going to be a little bit down the line but that's essentially what the idea of a role is it's not really that complicated the implementation can be a little bit comp uh complicated but we're going to try and make it very easy today so what i am going to do right now is i am going to just make it so that we're going to make an imaginary feature. We're going to, if you look here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, if I can pull it up, I'm going to make a Pokemon and I'm also going to make a Pokemon trainer role. So in my web API course, we had um, Pokemon and then we had the person who is the owner of the Pokemon, which is going to be a trainer. And let's just say, for imagine, you know, just imagining that you wanted to have people log in and they have the ability to choose between being a Pokemon or a Pokemon trainer. And you would give the user ability to sign or register or sign in with those. And depending on whether they are a trainer or a Pokemon, they will have different ways that they can access the site. So what we are going to do is shocker we're going to create a class within our account controller and we are going to go ahead and the first thing you really want to do just to kind of get it out of the way is we're going to bring in role manager so let's just bring in role manager and we're going to give it a type of identity user and we're going to have role manager right here and we could have just brought this in automatically but i didn't do that so i'm just guess I'm just gonna have to type it out um, manually. Nothing wrong with that. So identity user. And here in a little bit, we are actually going to assign this the app user, or we're going to actually put our own type in there. But for right now, we can just get away with identity uh, user until we have more, until we start using claims. That's like a, important thing that you want to take note of is that when you start using claims and i honestly don't even know why this is you're going to have to actually start having your uh real app user in here too as well so we're going to go in here we'll go role manager is equal to role manager just like that and we don't need that hyphen there and we need to make this lowercase Okay, so now we have brought in our role manager. 
Now, like I said, we're going to give our register the ability to create Pokemon and create trainer. And we're just going to find, we're not actually going to create our own um, role just yet, or our own role controllers. We're going to just add this to the register. And I'm going to take that breakpoint. We don't need any of these breakpoints. Go down here and Okay, so now we have we have found our uh, HTTP Git. If you don't know, if you don't have a um, attribute here, it's actually HTTP Git. I may have clarified that, may not. And then what we want to do is we're kind of in a predicament. We can't. It's really difficult to actually add roles to a database directly because you have this thing called a concurrency stamp and. You also have to be in charge of making all these GUIDs. So I'm not going to, You, I guess you could. I really wouldn't recommend it though. Um, it is kind of like a weird thing that .NET makes you, you kind of, you, you're kind of locked into making them this way as opposed to just being able to add them into the database. So we're gonna go in here and what it's gonna do is you have this well, nice little helper method that's going to say role exist. And then what we want to do is we we need to populate the database. And this is probably the best way that I know how in order to actually populate, the, uh, populate the, data, the database with identity role. You can, I've also got an example where I do this in web API where I add it in a seed context, but I'm not gonna do that in this one because it's that's gonna be way, way, way too much work. So. I'm, I'm a programmer, I'm lazy. So we're gonna go in here, go identity role, and we'll say trainer. And for some reason, this is not being brought in. So create async, create some more specified role. I'm trying to see where this is going wrong. Um, let me just kind of take a look at this here actually had this problem earlier. Okay, uh, we need to add identity role here. So if you don't have identity role, and you may be wondering like, what is identity role? You can make your own identity role. You can, you definitely know how to make, we actually made our own app user. If you know what an app user is, we actually made our own app user, but we made our identity role uh, that basically what happens is .NET is giving you these cool little pre-built users. And if you don't want to create your own, you can just uh, pass in their version. So we wouldn't even have to like, if we didn't want to, we could just literally leave out this app user, but I don't recommend that because your user, usually any user that you have is going to want more stuff in it, you know? <laughs> it's got a terrible way to describe it, you know, like more stuff, but you know what I mean? And then you'd have stuff like update time and I, identity user doesn't really actually have any of that. So that's why we actually have these, you know, little things. And if you just like look in it, you can see, hopefully you can see all the stuff that's in it. Let's see. Yeah, so this is all of like the stuff that's going to be in this actual, um, so you'll, you'll have the name and you'll have the concurrency stamp and lo and behold, look at that. It's the same exact thing. So that's kind of like what it is. Kind of went off on a tangent there, but hopefully you learn some good valuable information because that will probably help you a lot in the future. So. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to actually go within our view, mo our register view model and we need to add some stuff. So the first thing that we need to add under our return URL is we're going to add an I enumerable and we're going to add a select list item. Make this null so yeah, we don't we don't want to make we don't want to require this because if you don't add that little question mark there, it's going to require it, and we don't in this case we that's not something we want to do. So here we're gonna go here, and then we're gonna go string once again, make it nullable. Get set. Okay, awesome. Now our register view model is good. So now let's actually go into our real view model and add. And 
I'm not a big CSS guy, so I'm just, I'm just gonna copy this. This is kind of bad, but I'm just gonna copy and paste this in here, and I'll leave a link down in the description, but feel free to copy it down if you want to, but this is C Sharp, so we're gonna try and stay out of um, HTML and CSS as much as we can, because I don't like HTML or CSS, to be honest with you, so <laughs> we're gonna play by my rules. All right, so we've added a role select here, and that looks good to go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now we need to go ahead and we need to actually do our post. And the way that we're going to do our post is going to be very simple. So we're going to go in here. Let's go into our account. Let's see. So our register post. And what we need to do is we're going to just add a nice little if statement. So we'll go register view model. So if the register view model as role selected and we get access to these because we added these to our view model then we're going to go here not and then we're going to we're going to do a null check always want to do a nice little null check then we're going to go register view model so register view model then we're going to go role selected and it will go check the length could do this don't know if you could do that by count. I don't know what object type it, type it is. You, you Maybe you could have a count there, but I'm not gonna do that. Could if you wanted to. So go here, then we're gonna check role selected. And if this is a Pokemon trainer, so it doesn't really matter. You could do either one, just be caught, you know, just be aware of what you're checking for. So in this, one we're actually checking for a trainer and we haven't built the list yet but we'll build the we'll be, or we haven't built the drop down selector yet which we will build or maybe we did yeah we actually need to go back and add the drop down because we added a drop down and i'll show you guys how to make a drop down here in a second so we go here um after i after i get done with this so here we're gonna go await user manager we don't want our signer manager and it's kind of strange because you would think it would be in the role, but I guess because Microsoft's reasoning is that you're adding it to the user, they add it in here. But uh, like I was honestly perplexed too, like why they why didn't they just make add this to the role manager because you're adding a role? But I don't know, maybe Microsoft knows a little bit better, or it's a violation of the single responsibility principle. If you think it's if if you could somehow interpret it as a violation of the this is super nerdy of the single responsibility principle please tell me down below how it is in violation because everything is a violation of the single responsibility principle okay i'm being weird i'm being like way too nerdy okay so we're gonna go up here then we're gonna go up here we're gonna make our drop down list so we're going up here it's kind of strange too because select list item is used everywhere. Like you see, it's such like an innocuous thing, but select list item is like used everywhere. Tutorials, production, all types of apps, all types of MVC, um, every, all types of MVC apps, not APIs because APIs don't have drop downs. Okay, so we're gonna go up here, then we're gonna go list, then we're gonna build out this. Then we're going to select list item. And here, we're going to have our value and our text. So pretty much a really fancy dictionary. So we're going to go here. So, And this is going to be Pokemon. Just like that. Then we're going to go down and do the same set of things. So we're going to go items. We'll go new select list item. Then we're gonna go down here, value is equal to trainer. And then we're gonna go text, same thing, trainer. And I'm thinking that could be it. I hope so. Okay, so I'm just gonna do, and depending on the role and I'll show, okay, so let's actually do one more thing. And this is just, everything's wired up. You're ready to go pretty much, but just for, demonstration purposes and so that we can actually check if the app is actually working 
we'll go into our home page and use some of these cool little helpers that ASP.NET Identity gives us in order to check for these roles. So we're gonna go is authenticated. So first we'll check if is off authenticated. Then we're gonna have, there's probably a better way to do this, but I am not, you know, this is a tutorial. So we're just gonna have a couple nested if statements. I'm sure there's some way that could be done to make you know, it not have these nested if statements, maybe not, but uh, I'm just gonna do it this way. So we're gonna go H3, I'm gonna say your role is Pokemon. Then we go here, I'm going to go, I'm gonna give it H3, your role is Pokemon trainer. Okay, and we'll go ahead just make a dummy person. Hopefully this works good. Then go in here. So I'm gonna go, just go ahead and make somebody really quick. And this is not populating. Do not know why this is not populating. So we're gonna have to go back and we're, we are going to have to debug. So go here and the issue occurred in our um, delete, so we need to go up here and we need to see what's going on. So we've got list items. Oh, I didn't actually assign this to the view model. So we're gonna go register. So now we need to go down here, register view model and we need to assign this to our role list and we need to give this our list items and that should do it. Going to, going to Neil Cummings get up right now. Okay. We're going to stop and we're just going to start it over. So go here and I'm going to take off that breakpoint and I'm going to bring it back. Okay, so now we have, and that is misspelled, so I need to go back and um, give it the correct spelling, or it's not. It actually, I think it actually still would work because the value was good, but with that type of engineering attitude, that's a recipe for disaster. So let's be a little bit more thorough than that. Okay, so I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go, two, three, two, three, two, I'm gonna give it two, three, two, three, and I'm going to give it the same username and I'm trying to think of a, um, I'm just gonna call this star, the thing that's on my desk is Starbucks. I'm gonna go Starbucks underscore, Starbucks underscore 100. And then I'm just going to copy and it's not going to let me, so I'm gonna go Starbucks underscore star bucks underscore 100. Then I'm gonna go Pokemon, please. Okay, not as confusing. I'm just going to go and go get a pat, I'm just gonna go password generator. So I'm gonna go password generator. That's probably the best way to do it anyway. So I'm gonna generate a password. Okay. So go in here, give it that password. Password two three two three two three two three. I'm going to give it the same email. Give it a Pokemon roll. Okay, your role is Pokemon. So now we have role set up. We are good to go. Now, the next video, we're going to make a list. We're gonna list all the users. We're going to list the roles. We will give the ability for you to basically CRUD on users. And then we will do claims CRUD, which is gonna be a total brain melter. So definitely stick, stick around for that. Hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.